Dude, this thing is shredding! <sighs> Alrighty, so in today's video, we are gonna be covering all things cooling related with this engine. I'm gonna be going over parts that I'm replacing, upgrades that I'm making to the cooling system, and also some simplification that I'm gonna be doing to the cooling system. As we all know, BMWs are absolutely notorious for having terrible cooling systems, and ultimately that just comes down to the amount of plastic that they put in their cooling system. Holy shit, this man's going... This man is listening to some crazy ass music. Alrighty, so the first place they're gonna find some really questionable plastic is gonna be on the water pump. Not only does the water pump from factory come with the plastic impeller, it also comes with a plastic pulley, which just kinda, that kinda boggles my mind, you know? Like, of all the places you wouldn't want plastic, it would definitely, definitely be the water pump, let alone the pulley, because I've heard plenty of horror stories of people's OEM water pumps just blowing up inside the block, or even for that matter, their pulley blowing up and then you lose cooling and then that just kind of spells disaster for these engines. So hopped on FCP Euro, I picked up a new water pump with a metal impeller and then along with that, I'm also gonna be replacing the plastic pulley with this nice aluminum pulley from Rain. I'm actually really hyped about the finish on this thing. It's not like super silver like the rest of the engine, but it has like this nice, like almost, I don't even know how to describe it. It's almost like a gunmetal color and I think it's gonna look really good on the front of this engine. So I guess we'll go ahead and get this water pump in and then we'll move on. Installation on this is super easy. You really just wanna make sure you lube up the O-ring and then from there you pretty much just slot it in. There we go. Then we just have these four little nutty boys on here. Alrighty, now you're gonna wanna be extra, extra careful that you do not over torque these nuts. I have seen plenty of people either strip the bolt or totally break off the bolt inside of this front timing cover and that turns into a huge pain later on if that ends up happening. The torque spec on these is eight foot pounds. My foot pound torque wrench doesn't go down that low so I'm gonna be using this inch pound one so it's gonna be 96 inch pounds. I honestly really hate how ugly these nuts are looking but I don't have any new hardware and I mean, I guess it's gonna, it's gonna get covered up by the pulley anyway so I mean, it's not that huge of an issue. All right, so now we can throw the pulley on. This pulley is actually cool because not only do you get the pulley of course, you also get brand new hardware and they even throw in a new serpentine belt. That's sick. Get in. Go. Go in. Wait a second. Why is there no hole there? Wait a second. Did I make some sort of oopsie? <laughs> oh, no. Okay, so I didn't even realize this, but you can see that the holes on this aren't exactly square. They're actually a rectangle. And sure enough, rectangular format on this. So that's new. I actually didn't know about that. Yes, sir, now the holes line up. Interesting, I wonder if there's some reason for them deciding to not make it just square. I don't know, you never know with BMW. BMW is just weird. They like to be different. They built different. All right, and then these get torqued down to 89 inch pounds. There we go. Sick. Damn, look at that. Oh, that looks so clean. What the heck? Oh, I love that. All right, now the second place that you're gonna find questionable plastic is for the thermostat housing. I'm honestly not sure if all of BMW's six cylinders from the E36 generation came with plastic thermostat housings. So this might not be applicable to everyone, but if you have a plastic thermostat housing on this, it's definitely gonna be a good idea to swap it out for an aluminum one because over time, as the heat cycle, they tend to become pretty brittle. And at one point when you go to take off a radiator hose, you might just end up snapping it off. And you just don't want that. So I went ahead and picked up an aluminum thermostat housing and a new thermostat from the young Borg Warner. Now this thermostat does have an O-ring around the outside, so I'm gonna go ahead and lube this up real quick. Now this new thermostat that I picked up doesn't have like an actual hole for like the coolant bypass when the thermostat's actually closed, but it does have this little arrow up here. And that's gonna wanna be straight up and down as if the engine was placed in the car. Now, obviously the engine isn't in its orientation that it's gonna be inside the car because BMW likes to be different and they have their engine at 45 degrees. So I'm gonna kinda just place this boy in here and kinda clock this little arrow to about, 45 degrees 
and that looks pretty good to me. Now there is a small gap for this O-ring to slip into once you go to tighten down the thermostat housing. So hopefully with the aid of this grease on the O-ring, it should have no problem going in. A lot of people say that with these aluminum thermostat housings that you're gonna want to do a bit of RTV around this gasket right here. So I'm gonna throw some on real quick. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and say that that's probably sufficient. All right, now we can go ahead and pop this thing on here. Shit, I don't have a socket. Oh no. Oh, this is big bad. I didn't think about this. Sick. So the three bolts over on this side of the housing are a bit tinier than this one on the side because you have this little, um, this engine lift point that you have to bolt to and it has a slightly bigger bolt. All right, so I had to move away from finger tightening for this side of it, just so I can try and get this O-ring on the thermostat to seat correctly. All right, so this gets torqued down to 89 inch pounds, so just under eight foot pounds. So be very careful when you're going around to tightening this. All right, so we got this all finger tightened. You can see a nice little squeeze of RTV coming out on the top and on the bottom a little bit. Alrighty, the thermostat housing is all torqued down. Now it's time to go over the entire plan for simplifying the cooling system on this. A while back, I talked to Andy, the dude who sold me this engine, and he introduced me to this really cool idea that I think is going to make this entire, entire cooling system a hell of a lot better than it is stock. I'll throw up a picture right now. He told me about this thing called an inline filler neck. Uh, specifically, it's a raised inline filler neck. As a lot of people know, these BMW engines are a pain and a half to bleed, and this part is gonna help out a lot. All right, so obviously the engine is in the, in the car and we don't have like the radiator and everything sitting around, so you guys will have to do like some visualizing on your end to be able to know what I'm talking about. But essentially, you have your two radiator hoses that come out of the thermostat housing right here, and right in the middle of this hose right here sits the inline filler neck. So with the inline filler neck, it'll sit here and the fill port for the cooling system will sit about three inches up, which will in turn make it the highest point in the system and will make this a hell of a lot easier to bleed. And not only is it gonna raise the fill point of the engine, it's also gonna make it so I just don't need a reservoir whatsoever. And as you guys know, these engines come with plastic uh, coolant reservoirs, so that's just more plastic we're taking out of the system, thankfully. Alrighty, so that's step one of the cooling system simplification. Step two is a little bit more drastic. I've decided I'm not gonna be running heat in this car anymore. I know a lot of people are probably gonna tell me to keep heat, because I mean, I live in Washington, there's a lot of rain, windows fog up a lot, and it's honestly gonna make it a pain. But I figure I'm just gonna try and use like that spray that you spray on like glass to make it so it doesn't fog up. Worst case scenario, you're gonna catch me at the track with a squeegee in between laps rubbing off my windshield, but I don't think it's gonna be that much of an issue. The reason I'm getting rid of the heating system though is to get rid of the spider hose and all the coolant lines that sit up underneath the intake manifold. Normally you would have this metal spider hose that sits up underneath the intake manifold and connects back behind the water pump. On this, you have a port that connects a hose back up to the heater core. You have the return line back to the reservoir, which we won't be needing because I'm totally getting rid of the reservoir. And then you have this line that goes up to the throttle body, acts as a throttle body warmer. Along with deleting that piping, I'm also going to be plugging up this port right here, which also goes to the throttle body. And I'm also gonna get a block off plate for this hose right here. This hose is another one that just goes back up to the heater core. I still need to figure out what I'm gonna do with this port back here though. Originally, I just planned on totally welding up that hole and just completely closing it off. But then I decided I didn't wanna run the chance of potentially ruining the front timing cover on the engine. So while searching online, I found this coolant hose adapter that people use when they do an OBD1 coolant system conversion on these engines. And here, I'll throw up a picture on the screen right here. So I'm just gonna pick this up, weld it while it's off the engine, and then I'm gonna epoxy it in. That way, if I end up messing up welding on it, then I could just cut, cut it off a little bit, try again, and then worst case scenario, I'll just have to buy another one. So with the raised inline filler neck in conjunction with the heater delete, that's literally only gonna leave us 
with the two hoses coming off of the thermostat housing. When I said I wanted to simplify this cooling system, I really meant I wanted to simplify it. Without a plastic reservoir and without all these hoses up underneath the intake manifold, it's seriously gonna cut down on any potential leaks that can happen on this engine. And I guess while we're on the topic of the cooling system, I should show you guys the radiator that I picked up. So I went ahead and picked up this fully aluminum CSF radiator. As you guys know, the stock radiators on the 328s, 325s, they all have the plastic end tanks. So they, they blow out, they break over time just due to heat cycling and all that. So I wanted to avoid any possibility of there being coolant leaks or catastrophic failures like that. So we have this, this beautiful aluminum radiator. I really hope you guys were able to follow along with all that, but I'm pretty sure with that, we've deleted every bit of plastic within this cooling system. And I think we have simplified it pretty much as much as you can. <laughs> now that we have all that out of the way though, I think I'm gonna finish buttoning up this engine. I'm gonna get the oil filter housing back on, power steering pump, uh, alternator, and we're just gonna kinda get this back to its original form. And then I think we're gonna call it a day. All right, so I went ahead and gave this a quick little scrub just to de-dingify all the visible bits a little bit. All right, got everything put back on and torqued down, and now we're gonna go ahead and move on to putting on the new valve cover. As I mentioned before, somehow this one got a hole punched in it. So I just went ahead, picked up a brand new one. This one's super nice. Came with all the gaskets and everything. So should just be a direct swap over. All right, so I got the entire surface cleaned up for the valve cover. Um, I did end up making a little bit of an oopsie though. I went and I bought all new grommets. Well, I thought I bought all new grommets, but unfortunately I only counted all the bolts on the outside of the valve cover and not the ones that run down the center of the valve cover. So I'm gonna have to order like four more grommets, but I figure it'll be all right for now. I can just switch them out later. But before we get this valve cover on, we need to put some RTV along this, along this, and then we also need to put some RTV down in these little cam lobe things. All right, so unfortunately these already kind of squished grommets aren't wanting to fit down into the holes for these uh, center bolts. So um, probably just have to hold, up on, hold off on those for now. But I mean, other than that, she's back together. Like she's a whole engine now. Like this shit's insane. Oh, she looks so good. <laughs> New valve cover looking minty, no hole anymore. This thing is getting closer and closer to finally getting back in the car. Things are probably gonna be slowing down a little bit here for like the next few weeks, purely just because Christmas is coming around and I'm trying to cut back on my spending a little bit. But yeah, I think that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I hope y'all enjoyed. I hope y'all have a nice day and I will see you in the next one.